Okay, so now I want to introduce songwriter, producer, frontman, badass philanthropist, Ryan Tedder. Okay, bringing on Ryan Tedder, everybody. Yes! Yo. <laughs> there it is. You've been having some tech problems too. I don't know how. I see you live all the time. I'm telling you though, Miley, it has been, uh, I don't think I've gotten live maybe one time without connection not happening, Wi-Fi not happening. And then two nights ago, Instagram Live went down across the whole country for about 45 minutes. That's what was happening right before the show, which I was... A little bit panicked, but the good news is no one's really going anywhere, so they're not going to miss the show no matter what. And all my fans are writing, it's okay. We have nothing else to do but wait, so. Yeah, I call it the uh, United Nations of Boredom. Yeah, so I, um, I want to talk to you about how you've been staying bright in dark times because your lives and your attitude during the crisis has just been as inspirational as, you know, your songwriting. So what have you been doing just to mentally stay in, you know, light and illuminated? Well, we, when we got back to the States um, almost two weeks ago today, two weeks ago today, I'll make it a very short story. We were doing a miniature, what you'll understand as an underplay tour, right? You do yeah. six or seven small venues to set up for your arena tour that comes months and months later. We had to cancel Milan because they closed the border on us as we were headed to Italy, but we couldn't really get a sense of how crazy this thing was. Then we got to London, we played it. I wasn't quite taking it seriously yet because I just was kind of detached and on tour. And then as I'm landing at LAX, a good friend of mine who I'd spent the entire previous night with dinner. We shared pizza, we shared food, drinks, hung out. He was in the hospital. So he texted me from the hospital. He's like, mate, I'm so sorry, but you need to go straight to a doctor. You need to get tested. I, I have coronavirus and it sucks. I'm in the hospital. And then my publicist who was with me all day, she came down with it. So I called my doctor and he said, go straight to your studio. Don't go home. Don't see your kids. Don't see your wife. Go home. So the first three days, I was kind of emotional because I'd been on away from my family for two weeks. And then like the third day I snapped and was like, you know, you know what? Screw this. Let's give let's do live concerts every night for free. Let's do a cooking show. I'm going to start quarantine cuisining every single night. I love to cook and yeah. let's just connect the, let's, let's connect with the rest of the world. And I swear to God that interactivity has kept my sanity. It's just like yeah. making music and, and reaching out just what you're doing. This is what has kept me sane. Yeah, we were talking yesterday, I was doing something with Instagram and this quote from Willie Nelson, he said, the minute I counted my blessings, my whole life turned around. So yep. the minute that you kind of start looking at what you have, which, you know, I'm definitely not oblivious to, our situation is, you know, very unique. And a lot of people have a lot more struggles and stress around this time than I do. But if I can bring some peace and, you know, uh, brightness and not necessarily even optimism or don't worry, be happy. Because on the show, yeah. I talk about worry is a necessity to allow us to do what we need to do. You know, worry keeps us washing our hands because you're worried about keeping your wife and kids safe. Worry yeah. is very healthy, but if we can push pause on anxiety and worry for an hour and just have a good time and think about songwriting, maybe you could convert that worry and anxiety into a song, which we do all the time. A hundred percent. I think that the, what you do with it, cause we all feel it. And I don't know about you, but like I have days where I go the whole day and I don't even think about what's going on really. And then I'll have a day like yesterday watching um, the governor and the mayor having a conversation and telling us uh, it's going to be two more months. <laughs> I had, a, I had a moment yesterday. I had a freak out yesterday for like an hour where I literally was like kind of doing one of these things like, Oh my God, two months. Uh, wait, what? Like, and, and then I just kind of chilled and I was like, wait a minute. I'm not being asked to go to war. We're not being asked, like you've seen all the memes. Everybody's gone meme crazy for the last uh, two weeks. Uh, the, all, but all the quotes about like our grandparents got asked to go like sacrifice their lives and do all these things. We're being asked to stay indoors, watch Netflix, get on Instagram, talk with each other and interact in new and unique ways. And I think that you are doing, I use you as an example uh, when we talking with Interscope, my record label and different people. How do you 
provide levity. We're not providing, like we're not saying it's all okay, don't worry about anything. What we're providing is, is levity and we're providing humor and music to me is the most cathartic thing in the world. And that's what you do, that's what I do in songwriting. The amount of songs that are gonna come from this experience, I think is, I think it's gonna be a lot. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, you know what? I, I think it's a really important um, talking point just about not encouraging for every day to go, we're going to get through this together. Like, you know, someone actually said to me one time, like, don't worry, it's going to happen. And I said, it's not going to happen. I'm going to make it happen by my choices. So the more, even though it seems crazy, the more you stay home, the yep. quicker you will get back to life yes. as we know it. The more that you make these sacrifices, the more that, you know, you'll get rewarded in return. The more that we act irresponsibly or go, you know, not, not being considerate towards others, we'll just make this, this process take even longer. And so I think saying, you know, that we're using this platform for people to not worry. We're in a unique position where we do have to worry less because yes. not much in my life is going to change, but a lot will change in other people's lives. So yeah. if we can bring an hour of, you know how you said some days you don't think about it at all. If we could bring an hour of that, of just pushing pause on the worry, I would feel like my job is done. And that's what songwriting does, not just in pandemics and not just in crisis, but in heartbreak, when you lose, a family member um, or when you fall in love for the first time or you go on you know you get kissed like this mu music narrates our life and narrates yes. our story and so it's we the soundtrack to heal all the time yeah yeah music is the soundtrack i got into music because i used it so exclusively as the soundtrack to my life throughout childhood from the first cassette tape i had which was the beach boys greatest hits to um through the MC Hammer and terribly dressed uh, scene of the early 90s, <laughs> um, through the you know hard rock and heavy metal and, and on into now and, and working with artists like you, music is my catharsis. And I don't know about you, but every single time, I didn't get into music to make money. Like I, 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 like I just wanted to make a living because I, music did so much for me as a child and as, as a uh, you know, adolescent and as a young adult it was my soundtrack to the right. good times and the bad times. I wanted to create that feeling for other people. And it's really that simple. And every time I get together with songwriters, probably once a session, I look around and I go, can you believe this is our freaking job? You did it with me, which by the yeah. way, we just totally uh, spilled the tea that you and I are working together. I see all my fans freaking out. They'll be <laughs> really soon. Um, I was gonna ask you, cause you probably know more about this than I do because I have never really thought of myself so much as like a business woman necessarily. I'm just like full artist in here, DIY. So yeah. like re in regards to streaming or making music. So when you're saying like from the beginning of your career, you were just trying to make a living, that actually probably would have been tougher because it would have been more based on like physicals and how do you get money to like print the album and how do you get money? Mm -hmm. to act? Okay, so it would have been very expensive. Now, is it, can't you take your career and take, it much more into your own hands by streaming services. So it actually is much more simpler to turn your music into making a living or is it harder or what's yes. the deal? It's, it's, it's the answer is a bit of both. And let me address the easier part. The easier part about getting into music now as a career, if you want to get into music as a career, the barrier to entry, i.e. the gatekeepers, I need to get a record deal. When I started, in 2003, four, pursuing a, a music career, it was all about, we gotta get a record deal. We gotta get, I wanna sign with Columbia Records or Interscope because that, that was like a brand, that was the first stage stamp of approval, right? Now we make the album, now we have a hit. Um, if you look at the last, out of the 20 songs in, in the world right now, the top 20 globally on Spotify, eight of them are brand new artists that broke off TikTok that had no previous records. And now that's, I'm not saying that everybody should try and game TikTok to have hits. The point I'm making is you had, you had people that were, I worked on Little Nas X's EP. Yeah. Um, right after I was with him the day that Old Town Road hit number one. Like he walked into my door and got a text from Ron Perry, you're number one, congrats. And it was crazy. He was eating pizza on his sister's couch nine months before that, or no, six months before that. So 
it is easier to get into music now because anybody can do it and you can monetize it. I signed an artist named Cautious Clay. Shout out Cautious Clay. If anybody's listened to Cold War, which is kind of his ubiquitous song. He has no record deal. He lives in an apartment in Brooklyn and the guy is crushing it. And he, he gets no radio and he does so well. That's the easy part. Anybody can get into it, it's good. The, the hard part is you are now competing with the world. Mm -hmm. So it used to be those barriers to entry, like record deals, all that stuff, it limited the amount. It made it an exclusive club. So if you signed to Hollywood Records like you did, or I was on Interscope or Columbia, it meant I was only competing with other signed artists. Now you're competing with the entire world. So it's easier, but there's a lot more music out there to compete with. So it's kind of both. Right, so what about when you have like, yeah, a viral song, turning that into a career seems like that would also be the struggle because yes. like you said, you don't want to just encourage TikTok artists as well because you want to be able to sustain yourself and sustain your career. So that seems like that would be a big challenge. That's, that's the hardest part. And what I would say to anybody that's starting, if you end up with an accidental hit, um, which, you know, <laughs> right, they're amazing. But like, if you think, if you think about like, um, you know, Dance Monkey, right? right? Nobody saw that coming. If you think about Roddy Rich, The Box, which is now with a TikTok song that exploded, the hardest thing to do is follow that up. The hard, the hard thing about music today, there's a lot of one hit wonders. There's more one hit wonders now than in the history of recorded music because these people didn't plan on having a music career. Right. Um, Little Nas X, however, My followed it. <laughs> That's fine. He followed O Town Road with Panini. And by the way, Panini, by any label, by any artist standard, is a smash. It's like a billion streams. It's a huge record. Um, and he's following it up. So yeah, if you're gonna get into music and this is what you wanna do, just make sure you've got other, other songs. Make sure you got more than just one. Right. Um, okay, so, you know, I, I, one, I wanna talk about, now that we're talking about kind of accidental hits, because you were talking about, okay, so you got quarantined, you had to finish your record in quarantine. Yeah. You came out with a song and then wait, so what happened? Because you were telling me all of a sudden now it's on like every TV commercial ever. <laughs> this, all right, I, I've never experienced anything like this in my life. And, and we as a band have been a very licensed band for TV commercials and movies and stuff. So I'm used to that. I've never had anything happen like in the last four days. I posted a song. We were finishing our album. The fifth One Republic album was due. What is today? It's due today. Our deadline's today. Mixed, mastered, you name it. So it happened to land in the middle of quarantine. We dropped a new single called Didn't I, which is thankfully doing really, really well. But we dropped it on the Friday. It came out Friday, last Friday morning. Three hours later, the World Health Organization announced a global pandemic. So it was kind of like a tree falling in the forest. You're like, well, there goes that. Let's see what happens. And a lot of artists feel that way right now about dropping new music during this time. So we went home, been quarantined. We had two songs left to finish. One of the songs on the album was called Better Days. The entire chorus already existed. I ended up writing the lyrics four days ago, five days ago, while in quarantine. All I could write about is what's happening and how weird LA feels and right. how weird the world feels, but I didn't want it to be depressing. So we made it as like this glimmer of hope record, like the good life or something, like some of the other songs that we've done. I posted it on Instagram, the CEO of Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, whatever, like a 20 car company called me we just heard the song. We want to use it for our entire campaign. Nobody's really selling cars right now. We want to change our whole strategy for the next three months. We've already bought the ads. It's going to be everywhere starting Tuesday night. That was on Saturday. We finished the record. The commercial started. We, I did a live stream last night and half my stream was, oh my God, your song is on this commercial, this commercial. And we are now donating. We decided, you know what? Let's partner with Spotify and Music Cares. Let's donate proceeds from the streams the revenue from this song directly to Music Cares because the music industry just got hammered with coronavirus. All our, like so many people have been laid off. 90% of everybody's crew has been laid off and they don't have a plan B. Right. You know, you, Cause you can't go work at a restaurant. You can't go get some other side gigs. So they're literally, how am I gonna pay my bills? Music Cares pays, uh, is a charity that pays for people that have been affected right now by COVID-19. So creators, songwriters, musicians, there's a huge fund and Music Cares is trying to take care of our people. And right. so we want, we want this song to generate money and to give it to people that need it. I think there's two parts of, of, you know, of music. There's the music industry and then there's the music community, which I feel like you and I are a part of. You know, yeah. we're, it's about you and me and 
Allie Tamposi and getting on the couch and like me just spilling my guts of what my last two years have been like. And it's very intimate. And so everything does have to stop in this time for everyone's safety so we can keep making great music. But it is challenging because there's no time like right now that you want to write a fucking song. I've never wanted nope. to get in the room more. Yeah, everybody's, I got a text from Niall Horn yesterday. Uh, I got a text from Niall, I got a text from Jason Evigan from what, from like, it, you name it, just saying, yo, when can we get virtual writing sessions going? Can we do this? Like, like everybody's tours are getting blown out and canceled. So now is the time to write songs. Well, count me in, cause I'm in there. And now we can do it on Zoom or whatever, so we can have the whole freaking crew in there. Ex exactly, exactly. Um, so, you know, I, again, us talking and our connection, I think my fans are now knowing that we're working on the project together. And we've been talking, I talked to Mark Ponson about the same thing. And I think, again, it's just artists kind of going, when is the appropriate time to release music? So I see all the fans really asking. As soon as it feels like, you know, for me, I'm a performer more than someone that's like, you know, goes by like streaming or radio play. I'm a fucking yeah. performer. I want to do festivals. I want to do shows. So the minute yep. that that's all good, our songs are, they're going to get to hear those. So um, I'm really excited for everyone to hear the music that we've made. Um, and the last question was, um, who's your favorite artist that you've ever worked with? My favorite artist besides you? I mean, <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Uh, I actually did tell my manager the other day, I said, I said, I, when we wrapped some of those sessions, I was like, those were some of the most effortless, funnest sessions I've ever had. It was like, it was, you, you just get into a rhythm. You get into a rhythm. So that's, I say everyone, if I have a phenomenal experience, it, I put it in my top three, because I can never say what's number one or two. So you'd be in my top three, and I'm not yeah. just blowing smoke. Um, my number one of all time is Paul McCartney. That's sick. It's, I, I, I produced and co-wrote on his most recent album that came out last year. I flew to England. I got to play with all the Beatles instruments. He told me, how, how is Blackbird written? How is Hey Jude written? How is like all the yesterday? How did you come up with Eleanor Rigby? And he told me all the stories. Anytime you ask him a question, he just tells you, oh man, that's a cool story, man. Let me tell you, that, you know, I, I remember. And he tells you the whole thing. And then he came to my studio here in LA and we finished it and the rest is history. So yeah, McCartney, Paul McCartney. That, I mean, that is definitely, that is the best number one you could have. That's so sick. Ryan, everyone should follow Ryan on Instagram because your cooking is like, I didn't know that. Why have you not been bringing snacks to the studio? I know. I bring drinks instead of snacks because uh, Watt is always eating at the strangest times in Alley. <laughs> Everybody has weird food allergies and stuff. I don't want to I don't I want to mess the with snacks. Um, your new song's awesome. I love what you're doing with like everything just philanthropically too. You're just the man. So I can't wait to work back in the studio. Thanks for going live with me on Bright Minded. Thanks so much for having me. Tell your family that I love them and I'm thinking about you guys. Will do. Ditto. Right. Peace. Bye, Be good. See you guys.